Mr. Brady is recognized to speak on his amendment. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The cost of health insurance is an issue that we can and should be tackling on a bipartisan basis. You know I've never been a fan of the Affordable Care Act because the health care simply wasn't affordable. And over the years, it's become more and more expensive for more and more Americans. It's a reason why the individual mandate uh, was struck down uh, so that uh, Americans would not be forced to buy health care they didn't want and couldn't afford and have to pay a tax for it. Today, in this bill, we are told that to provide lower health care, we need to make the emergency COVID uh, provisions permanent that we have to increase taxes and spend hundreds of billions of dollars to subsidize health care premiums for the wealthy. Under this, their proposal, a couple from Kay County, Oklahoma, making a half a million dollars a year, would qualify for a $6,000 a year subsidy. Taxpayer funding of health care costs for a couple making a half a million dollars, how is that going to help lower the underlying cost of care? I would also point out that 6000 seemed high, until I learned today that we are going to also give them a $12,500 check to buy that electric vehicle uh, of $74,000. Look, it doesn't have to be this way. We should be working together on policies that expand transparency, choices, and affordability for patients, just like we did with surprise medical billing legislation last year. That's what this amendment represents, a different approach that both parties should get behind an approach that allows patients of all ages to purchase affordable catastrophic plans that provide all the same benefits as the other exchange plans, but don't break the bank with through the, month roof, uh, through the roof monthly premiums. A bipartisan approach to allow employees to receive on-site care from their employer and still receive contributions to their health savings accounts. Another bipartisan provision to double the contribution limit on health savings accounts for the next two years Yet another to allow patients with direct primary care arrangements to maintain eligibility for health savings accounts. We also codify the Trump administration's rule to expand the flexibility of individual coverage health reimbursement accounts important to so many workers. This rule would add flexibility for both employers and employees and contributions can only be used to purchase an ACA compliant plan. I want to be clear. We want to help Americans afford their health care. We just disagree on how to go about it. I think the inefficient spending in this bill, $210 billion, all to prop up a law that has failed to address the true costs of care in this country, I don't think that's the right approach. We ought to work together to accomplish our shared goal, not use a process that allows really for no bipartisanship or to slap a Band-Aid on the problem of ballooning health care costs. And as always, uh, we offer uh, uh, to sit down with the majority to work through uh, how to make uh, health care affordable. I would point out that uh, with the $700 or billion dollars we're told will come from drug pricing savings on the back of new cures, the $600 from so-called dynamic scoring that you only need another $200 billion to reach the uh, $1.5 trillion that Senator Manchin said he would accept. This amendment alone would achieve that without all the crippling tax increases on small businesses, on family-owned farms, uh, on American companies, and on their workers. With that, I urge adop adoption of my amendment and yield back. Let me recognize the gentleman from Texas, Mr. Doggett. I have, the give, amendment. I have to give the gentleman full credit for consistency. Uh, Republicans uh, have fought the Affordable Care Act since the very time it was conceived, tooth and nail. Year after year, with repeal effort after repeal effort, they've tried to repeal it. And this is the latest effort to simply repeal the improvements that are made in the, in the underlying bill in the Affordable Care Act and make it more accessible to more Americans. Uh, we, through the extension of additional tax credits, make the Affordable Care Act even more affordable for many middle-class Americans. And for the first time, uh, we say to Texas Republicans who have blocked access for two million Texans to get access to a family physician and necessary medications, we've had enough. You've had a decade in which to provide assistance to these 
uh, working Texans, and you have refused to do it, and so we are going to come up with a better way, a federal way, to come in and provide them some assistance by bringing them into the marketplace initially and continuing them there until some federal Medicaid program can be set up. There is no benefit to a family earning $500,000 under this bill. We cap the amount uh, for those who would get assistance, but we provide assistance to those who need it most, that are in the middle class, that are among the uh, working people in our country, uh, who may have had problems accessing the Affordable Care Act in the past, and we supplement that by providing assistance to the six million people across the country who've been excluded entirely from its benefits. We say to them, you've waited long enough, now we have an answer for you to share in the benefit that millions, hundreds of millions of Americans have received under the Affordable Care Act. The substitute offered in this amendment would be a very poor way of responding. It is a non-response, and it should be rejected. I move uh, its rejection. Thank the gentleman. Mr. Chairman, I move. Mr. Chairman? Yes, I was about to I recognize to you. All right, here we go, the finality. How do you like that? <laughs> the gentlelady you, from Chairman. Indiana, Ms. Wolarski, is recognized. Thank you, sir. Every human life is precious. An American taxpayer should never be forced to foot the bill for the destruction of life. I'm frustrated that my colleagues on the other side remain obsessed with using taxpayer dollars to destroy our nation's future potential and violating pro-Americans vital conscious protections. I believe in the American dream and in every American's ability to achieve it. That's why House Republicans have been united in our efforts to protect the unborn and prevent taxpayer funding for abortion. A majority of Americans, nearly 60%, agree that tax dollars should not be used to fund elective abortions. The Hyde Amendment has been in place for nearly a half a century with bipartisan agreement, saving the lives of more than two million innocent babies and protecting Americans' conscious rights. Mr. Brady's amendment will preserve this important pro-life safeguard by restoring long-standing height protections to Obamacare subsidies, ensuring that Americans' tax dollars won't be used to bankroll abortion services. In this committee, we should acknowledge the stark reality that there is a broad consensus that taxpayer dollars should not fund abortion. I urge my colleagues to join me in protecting innocent life by supporting this amendment. With that, I yield back the balance of my time. Thank the gentlelady. The gentlelady from California, Ms. Chu, is recognized to speak on the amendment. Uh, Mr. Chair, I move to strike the last word. The gentlelady is recognized. I strongly urge my colleagues to reject this amendment, the latest in an extreme anti-choice agenda Republicans are trying to push. One main purpose of this amendment contained on page 10 is to deprive women of the full range of health care services they need and deserve in the private health plans they would sign up for with their subsidies. Now, in Texas, we're already seeing the devastating consequences of what my colleagues are trying to do, make abortion access impossible. Overnight, Texans went from being able to access abortion, still with barriers, to living in a state where Roe versus Wade is effectively meaningless. If you live in Texas and need an abortion, you now have to travel hundreds of miles, if you can, to access necessary health care services. So that's the goal of my colleagues, to make abortion illegal, inaccessible, and unaffordable, knowing full well that this discriminatory action will fall hardest on black and brown women. In light of the shocking inaction of the Supreme Court on Texas's cruel abortion ban, it's more important than ever for us to ensure there are no added abortion restrictions in any solution to close the Medicaid coverage gap. Make no mistake, women had abortions before Roe versus Wade and they will continue to have abortions. The question is who will be able to access these healthcare services? The simple truth is that wealthy, white, well-connected women will always be able to access such services. Instead, it is black and brown women, those with low paying jobs, young people, and trans and non-binary people who are 
forced to carry pregnancies to term against their will. They are treated as host bodies, but then left with no resources or help when they do give birth. Now, now we're finally righting a wrong here by providing a pathway to health coverage for the millions of people left behind by state leaders who don't care about people's access to health care. This should be a moment of celebration for this committee, but instead we are facing yet another attempt to use the power of policy to restrict people's bodily autonomy. But these kinds of policies have tangible harmful consequences. When a woman wants to get an abortion but is denied, she's more likely to fall into poverty. And in Texas, black maternal health outcomes are still shockingly poor. While black women account for 11% of live births, uh, but 31% of maternal deaths. Any attempt to create new restrictions on abortion coverage distracts from what people need now, which is fair wages, paid sick leave, um, and a healthcare system that works for everyone. This amendment discriminates against people struggling to pay for their health insurance, but if my Republican colleagues would like to join me in ensuring that women have the ability to decide when they are ready to be a parent, I'd welcome their support in our efforts to expand access to comprehensive contraceptive coverage and sexual and reproductive health education for everyone. These are proven ways to empower women and ensure that they are making the choices that work best for them, their families, and their future. We must all work together to make sure everybody has the freedom and resources to make their own personal decisions about their lives, bodies, and futures free from political interference. I urge my colleagues to oppose this amendment, and I yield back. I thank the gentlelady. The gentleman from California, Mr. Yes, Thompson, Mr. Chairman, is I withdraw my point of order, and I yield to Mr. Doggett. The gentleman is recognized. I thank the gentlewoman from California for going through this 36-page amendment and finding out that in addition to uh, the harm that it would do to greater access to health care under the Affordable Care Act, that it also attempts to eliminate uh, any reproductive freedom. One would think that the new vigilante law that has been unleashed in Texas would be enough for those who want to interfere with a woman's fundamental right to decide her own future. Uh, as that vigilante law runs free, and of course the only response to it from our Republican governor in Texas is that he's going to stop rape in Texas, which would be some kind of accomplishment, but doesn't seem to be uh, uh, too likely in the near future. And he unleashes the vigilantes not on the rapist, but on the woman or anyone who might aid her from the taxi driver to the physician uh, to anyone who's counseled her on this. Uh, apparently, the Republican concept of freedom only extends to the decision, the fundamental right to infect your neighbors with a disabilitying dis ability disease by not wearing a mask or refusing to be immunized. Uh, when public health is at risk, only the individual's vanity and comfort seems to matter, but not the fundamental right. Why should we have, they object to mandatory mask, but they don't seem to have any objection to mandatory motherhood, even in the event of rape or incest. I think that this is a deeply personal and complex medical decision, and we don't need Republicans in Texas or in Washington in trapping a woman into a permanent life-altering future that she may not want. Complete disregard for what her doctor may advise, an absolute indifference to her basic constitutional right to privacy and reproductive freedom. This unconscionable mandate on motherhood cannot stand, and that's why the Biden administration is defending Texas women in the courtroom, and we must defend them here in Congress. First, it is by rejecting this amendment, but then we need to follow Congresswoman Chu's lead, I hope next week, in adopting the Women's Health Protection Act. This is legislation that she has written. It is essential legislation that would make unlawful many of the types of politically motivated restrictions 
such as the outrageous Texas ban, which would remove women's ability to choose quality reproductive care. The horrid Supreme Court action that took place that let the Texas law stand shows the impact of these Trump appointed justices. And Justice Sotomayor in her defense eloquently and powerfully said in part, quote, the Texas state legislature has deputized the state citizens as bounty hunters, offering them cash prizes for civilly prosecuting their neighbor's medical procedures. It cannot be the case that a state can evade federal judicial scrutiny by outsourcing the enforcement of unconstitutional laws to its citizenry, end quote. $10,000 bounties, that's the way Texas is interfering with this right. We should not add to it with this sorry amendment. We must not deputize government agencies as bounty hunters. We should reject this amendment and all of the extremism associated with it. I yield back. I thank the gentleman. The gentlelady from Washington State, Ms. Del Bene, is recognized to speak on the amendment. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This ideological amendment would take away all of the premium tax credits or health insurance subsidies on the ACA marketplaces for six states, including my state, home state of Washington, because Washington is one of six states that require all plans to provide full reproductive health coverage, including abortion. This amendment would rob nearly 222,000 Washingtonians of the health care coverage that they depend on. Because abortion is health care, and this amendment would put government again between a woman and her doctor. So I urge my colleagues to vote down this short-sighted ideological amendment intended to subjugate women and undermine the Affordable Care Act. And I yield back. Thank the gentlelady. The chair is prepared to call the question. Those in favor of the gentleman from Texas amendment signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, aye. no. 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 In the opinion of the chair, the noes have it. Amendment. Mr. Pass. Brady would like a recorded vote. The clerk will please call the roll. Mr. Doggett. Doggett votes no. Mr. Doggett votes no. Mr. Thompson. Thompson, no. Mr. Thompson votes no. Mr. Larson. No. Mr. Larson votes no. Mr. Blumenauer. Blumenauer, no. Mr. Blumenauer votes no. Mr. Kind. Mr. Kind. Mr. Pascrell. Pascrell votes no. Mr. Pascrell votes no. Mr. Davis. Davis votes no. Mr. Davis votes no. Ms. Sanchez. Sanchez votes no. Ms. Sanchez votes no. Mr. Higgins. Higgins, no. Mr. Higgins votes no. Ms. Sewell. Sewell votes no. Ms. Sewell votes no. Ms. Delbene. No. Ms. Delbene votes no. Ms. Chu. Chu votes no. Ms. Chu votes no. Ms. Moore. Moore votes no. Ms. Moore votes no. Mr. Kildee. Votes no. Mr. Kildee votes no. Mr. Boyle. Boyle votes no. Mr. Boyle votes no. Mr. Byer. Mr. Byer votes no. Mr. Evans. Mr. Evans votes no. Mr. Schneider. Schneider votes no. Mr. Schneider votes no. Mr. Swazi. Swazi no. Mr. Swazi votes no. Mr. Panetta. No. Mr. Panetta votes no. Ms. Murphy. Murphy votes no. Ms. Murphy votes no. Mr. Gomez. Gomez no. Mr. Gomez votes no. Mr. Horsford. Horsford votes no. Mr. Horsford votes no. Ms. Plaskett. Ms. Plaskett. Ms. Plaskett votes no. Ms. Plaskett votes no. Mr. Brady. Mr. Brady votes absolutely yes. Mr. Brady votes yes. Mr. Nunes. Nunes votes yes. Mr. Nunes votes yes. Mr. Buchanan. Buchanan yes. Mr. Buchanan votes yes. Mr. Smith of Nebraska. Smith votes yes. Mr. Smith of Nebraska votes yes. Mr. Reed. Reed, yes. Mr. Reed votes yes. Mr. Kelly. Ms. Mr. Kelly votes yes. Mr. Smith of Missouri. Smith of Missouri votes yes. Mr. Smith of Missouri votes yes. Mr. Rice. Mr. Rice. Mr. Schweikert. Mr. Schweikert votes yes. Ms. Walorski. Wolorski votes yes. Ms. Wolorski votes yes. Mr. LaHood. Stop by Stacy. LaHood, yes. 
Mr. LaHood votes yes. Dr. Wenstrup? Yes. Dr. Wenstrup votes yes. Mr. Arrington? Arrington's a yes. Mr. Arrington votes yes. Dr. Ferguson? Dr. Ferguson votes yes. Mr. Estes? Mr. Estes votes yes. Mr. Smucker? Mr. Smucker? Mr. Hearn? Aye. Mr. Hearn votes aye. Mrs. Miller? Mrs. Miller? Aye. Mrs. Miller votes aye. Mrs. Miller votes aye. Mr. Kind? Mr. Rice? Mr. Smucker? Mr. Smucker votes aye. Mr. Chairman? No. Mr. Chairman votes no. The clerk will call the roll. Tally, please. Mr. Chairman, I have 24 nays and 17 ayes. There being 24 noes and 17 ayes, the amendment fails. The committee will stand in recess until Wednesday, September 15th at 9 a.m.